4,000 kilometers south of Antipayuta in Mongolia, the winds of the Gobi Desert crash against the Altai Mountains. Zolbo and Altegan are brothers. They're nomad animal breeders and live under the benevolent authority of their grandfather. He's ordered them to gather the camels which have strayed far from the camp, as they usually do when grass is scarce. In the Gobi Desert, rain is rare, and often a few weeks early or late, which can totally upset the vegetation cycle. Only their vast experience enables nomadic camel breeders to survive in this unfertile universe to which they are so attached. Natsag watches his grandsons from the entrance to his yurt as they return to camp with the family's 80 camels. He looks worried. The last two summers have been too hot. The drought has hit us very hard. Many families have lost their herds. They go to Ulaanbaatar, penniless. I like desert life. I won't give it up. My herd isn't enormous, but there's not enough grass for all my animals. I'll split the herd in two. I'll only keep half of them and give the other half to one of my two grandsons, Altagan or Tsolbo. They both know camels very well. With our people, as soon as a child gets to be three or four years old, we teach him to take care of the baby camels. Zolbo is married. It might be a good thing for him, but it is the spirits who will decide. We'll see. <laughs> Old Natsak's clan is one of the last Bactrian camel breeding families. These camels are raised for transportation, for their meat and for their milk. A great deal of experience is required to breed them. A female can only give birth to one baby every two years, and the infant remains fragile for the first years of its life. The entire family looks after the animals with great care. Their nomadic breeder's life is closely and essentially linked to the herd. Natsag's animals are hungry. The camel's milk is not very abundant, and the little ones don't have as much as they need. Natsag knows of a pasture not too far away, but will there be enough grass there? I 
خرته منی ها هوا اتونی خبیل چر تو تگا کم بسان با ها غناس ناس چی دخالت شس Altagan and Zolbo have begun exploring the entire region in search of new pasture. Mountains, desert steppes, and snow-covered dunes create an immense landscape in which pasture land is very rare. Goats are also raised here. Although they produce one of the world's finest cashmeres, their increasing numbers have worn out the earth and disorganized traditional breeding. <laughs> Altagan is disappointed. His task is particularly difficult, but he has to keep looking. Zolbo climbs to the tops of the dunes to get a broader view. There's no grass to be seen on the horizon. Has he unknowingly offended the master spirits of nature? Are they taking revenge by moving the pastures further away? The Mongols believe that there are many living things that cannot be seen. The universe, they feel, is filled with invisible and omnipresent spirits. Water, plant, and animal spirits. Spirits of the dead living in the desert, haunting the steppes, the hills, and the mountains. Men must live in collusion with them. Altagan will be getting married soon. If he finds good pasture, he is more likely to be designated by his grandfather and thus gain his independence. But he's exhausted and discouraged. He's been looking for two days without any success. Suddenly, however, The grass is there, the seeds are good, the camels are saved. Back at the camp, Altagan, proud of his success, announces to old Natsag that he's found a free pasture beyond the dunes to the east, a day's walk away. Ma, Tsolbo's wife, asks Altagan about his brother, since she's had no news of him. Altagan hasn't seen him, and the whole family is worried. <laughs> Zolbo is far away, beyond the mountains. 
He's alone, lost in a sandstorm, and exhausted. In anticipation of misfortune, Natsag questions the oracle with the help of sacred coins. The coins, however, don't reveal anything, and the family is more worried than ever. The next day, Zolbo still hasn't come back. But it's the herd that determines the life of the clan, and it's therefore time to leave. The yurts are taken down, and the animals are loaded in a few hours. The caravan sets out with its 80-strong camel herd. Natsag's clan has passed the mountains. The nomads slide along the sand. They never build anything durable, since no one can possess the land. It belongs to the spirits, not to man. Their life is constant movement. Their only wealth is their herd. It's the number and the quality of the herd that gives the breeder his place in the social hierarchy. It's the camel who decides, and it's the grass, the rain, and nature in general, which the chief of the clan must read like an open book. He observes, he remembers, he senses when it's time to go, and he leaves, with the animals and the people of his clan following behind him. <laughs> At the pasture, someone is waiting. Zolbo has picked up his brother's trail and prefers to stay there rather than join the caravan. In this way, he hopes to prove that he knows as well as his brother how to find the grass the animals need. Sayo, 
The yurt's circular shape is symbolic of the universe. The interior is the core. The central pillar is in direct relation to the Earth's axis. That is how the spirits go in and out of the yurt. The atmosphere at dinner is relaxed. The clan has settled into a new pasture area. Everyone jokes around and recounts what he or she imagined had happened to Zolbo. <laughs> Mongol nomads begin training the camels they'll use for transportation when the animals are about four years old, after they've been castrated. A good camel trainer is skillful and knows how to show his authority. The nostrils of the future mount are perforated with a piece of hard wood, which will be used to lead them. Zolbo climbs onto the back of the young camel, which is being mounted for the very first time. Zolbo dominates the animal with ease. Natsak judges his grandson's performance with an eye honed by years of experience. Zolbo is flawless. Tomorrow, Natsag will go to the Lama Chinbold to consult the stars. He needs the spirit's advice now. Natsag must decide which of his two grandsons will inherit the second herd. <laughs> the entire clan goes to the Obu, a sacred cairn hanging on the side of the mountain where the spirits of the place live. The teachings of the wise men and the astrologists are very important in the Mongol world. They participate in all important family decisions. <laughs> By reciting the prayers, the old wise man pays tribute to the spirits of the Obu, and he consults the stars. To which of his two grandsons should Natsag confide half of his herd? The stars confirm Natsag's feelings. They designate Solbo. Natsag is overjoyed. Zolbo is married, and the herd will give him the independence he needs to live as a free man. 
As for Altagan, he will have to wait. He'll stay with the old chief, Natsag, who will rely on him. It's one of the last cold days of spring. In the Gobi Desert, the heat comes on suddenly, and the problem of water quickly becomes vital. In the early morning, Natsag's family has already taken down a yurt and loaded it on the camels. Zolbo and his wife Ma get ready to leave with the herd that has just been entrusted to them. Camel's milk is thrown over the tracks of the couple as they leave for good luck. Zolbo, master of his own destiny, will now seek his road on the earth where the spirits of his ancestors reign. It is they who award the pastures, who determine the fertility of the herd and the prosperity of the breeders.